Hey guys. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to create an express entry profile and what are some of the steps that you might need to follow in the due course. If you have not subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you like our videos, please make sure to hit the like button so that other people will be able to get to know about our videos. Now let's get straight into it. So guys, let's start by opening the Google search bar and let's type in immigrate to Canada. Let's click on the first link in here. And then on the right side, you can see an option to create an account or sign in. Let's click on that. Now, if you already have what is called the Government of Canada key, please go ahead and click in here. And then you can uh, use uh, input your username and password here. If you do not, you can register for a Government of Canada key. What this is, is basically an account page which will have your user ID and password and through which you can access your Express Entry profile. You can access, once you submit your profile, you'll be able to access uh, if you uh, your application and then you can see if you got an ITA and then you can see status of your application, so on and so forth. So please make sure to register so that you can move, move ahead with the Express Entry process. Now, since I already have a GC key, I am going to log into my existing uh, profile and existing account, and then I'm gonna show you how to move forward with the profile. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the, my account page, and at the bottom of my account page, uh, you can see something called start an application. So let's click on apply to come to Canada, as we can see Express Entry is right here. Um, since we do not have an existing personal reference code, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. And then we're gonna click on, so as you can see, there are three options here. We're gonna click on Express Entry. That's what we wanna move forward with. Now, next page is, um, we're gonna answer a few questions to determine our eligibility to the Express Entry program. Uh, now, these are a set of questions. And so uh, the, the first question asks about like which province or territory do you plan to live in? Now, if you know the place that you plan to land, then you can input that information in here. And even if this information changes after you receive a permanent residency, that is still fine. It's not a problem. So let's, I'm gonna select Alberta in here. I'm gonna click on next. Um, you all need to provide your uh, English or French la official language uh, scores that you received. So if you took a English exam, it will be either IELTS or CELPIP. So you can select one or the other here. If you take the French exam, you can select like TEF or TCF here. Um, since most people usually take IELTS, I'm gonna select IELTS in here and then move on to next. Um, as you know, you would have to have taken your English test or the French test within the last two years of your application. So again, I'm gonna assume that, you know, you took it earlier this year, 2022. Let's assume April 10th, let's click on next. Now, this is where you provide your scores for each section, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Now, if you are not sure what the minimum criteria is to apply under Express Entry in each of these sections, I would leave a link up the top. You can click on that uh, to see our video where we break down like, you know, what CLB or the benchmark that you need for each section. Uh, I'm, for the sake of convenience, I'm gonna enter 7.5 for speaking, uh, eight for listening, uh, eight for reading, and then I'm gonna see another 7.5 for writing. Uh, now, if you have other language test results, such as the French exam, you can input that here. Uh, I'm gonna assume most people would not have uh, more than one official language exam, so I'm gonna say none here, and then I'm gonna move on. Uh, now, this is where you input your work experience. Now, if you are someone who's looking to apply under the Canadian experience class, the, then you need to have at least one year of experience. Uh, so you can put that in here as one year or more. Uh, if you're somebody who's applying under the federal skilled worker or the federal skilled trade, uh, and if you do not have any Canadian work experience, then you can just select none in here. And in the option below, which asks for the NOC code of your Canadian experience, you can go on and click none of the above. And then you can move on to the next. Now, if you have foreign work experience along with the Canadian experience, experience or if you just have foreign work experience, this is where you can provide that information. Um, so in the last 10 years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have? Uh, you only get points for a maximum of three years. Any experience beyond that, you get the same number of points. So I'm gonna click on two to three. And then uh, you need to select the NOC of the job that you were in. Um, so if you're not sure, 
So in the last five years, if you have two years of experience in any of these NOCs, so please make sure to like provide that information in here. But I would assume that most people may not qualify under this section. So I'm going to select none here and I'll click on next. Now you need to be providing proof of funds depending on the program you're coming in. Uh, so uh, for most programs, which is the federal skilled worker and the federal skilled trade, uh, you need to show at least uh, $13,310 for one person. So that is what I'm going to select. Uh, for CEC, you don't need to show any proof of funds. Um, so I'm going to select one as a number of family members. Um, if you have a valid job offer in Canada, please make sure to provide that information here. Uh, especially if you if it is backed by an LMIA, that is what I believe this section is. But most people who are applying will not have, so I'm going to select no. And then you're moving forward. Uh, so now you can input your birth date. I'm going to assume a random birth date. Uh, and so if you have a degree, educational degree that you've completed outside of Canada, then you need to provide an educational credential assessment from WES or IQUAS. After you complete your WES and IQUAS and find out your equivalent uh, degree, you can select that here. So most people, I would assume, would start with a bachelor's. If you have a diploma or a master's, please select accordingly. Next. Now, here you have a few more options to determine like which of these uh, classes under uh, Express Entry you could qualify under. So we know that I've studied full-time in Canada. So if most people may not, and if you're applying under the federal skilled trade or federal skilled worker, you may not be have studied full-time in Canada. So I won't click that option. If you have experience, full-time work experience in Canada, please click here. If not, uh, just move on. If you have a relative in Canada who's 18 years older and who classifies under parent, child, grandparent, grandchild, and all of the other options, please select this option. If not, let's go on to none of the above. Click on next. If you're somebody who's married, please select so, but I would assume most people who are applying would be single. Uh, and so I'm gonna click on single here. And so based on the answers, the uh, IRCC has uh, decided that, you know, uh, we are eligible for express entry. And so we can move ahead to creating a profile. So we're gonna click on continue. Now, this is where you need your passport. Um, so you need to enter your last name. So I'm gonna just uh, type in a few characters and I'm put in uh, my first name. Uh, my male as gender, and then we're moving forward. Uh, again, marital status, I'm gonna say single. Now, this is the page where we need to provide all of the information uh, in terms of like our, our uh, inf personal information uh, to be able to submit the profile. Now, under personal details, you'll have to have your passport ready because you'll have to provide your first and last name, uh, your passport number, expiry date, so on and so forth. And the contact details, as the name suggests, you'll have to provide your uh, contact information and so on. Under study and languages, you will have to provide the uh, qualification where you received your uh, ECA under WES or IQAS uh, and the equivalent that you received. And this is also where you input your various test scores, whether it's IELTS, CELPIP, or TEF. Uh, under application details, if you received a nomination under any of the provinces, uh, then this is where you need to provide that information. If you are somebody who is working with a representative, then you need to fill out the representative form. And this is where you provide that information to IRCC. And then finally, work history. Uh, under work history, this is where you need to uh, make sure you find out what your NOC code or the tier code is. Uh, and the specific like, you know, uh, num four digit uh, code that is belonging to your job title or your job duties. And you need to also input like the number of years of experience. So the start date, start month, and the ending date, ending month. So that IRCC, can calculate the number of points that you would receive. Once you submit all of this uh, information, once you fill in all this information, you will then be able to submit your profile uh, to IRCC, who based on the score you received, you will be entered into a pool. Now, every few weeks, IRCC will conduct a draw. And if the number of points that you have is higher than the draw that is uh, uh, taking place, then you would receive what is called an invitation to apply. And after you receive an invitation to apply, you will then have to provide uh, documentation for all of the details that you provided here. So I highly recommend that you know you uh, collect all of the documentation uh, and make sure you understand what your like you know 
comprehensive ranking score is uh, before you move ahead and create this express entry profile and move forward. So this way you make sure that you know everything is ready when you receive the invitation to apply. Now this is um, this is all that you need to know in order to create an express entry profile uh, to start your first step towards coming to Canada. Now that you've seen the detailed video on how to create an express entry profile, there's just one thing left for you guys to do. Just go and create it. Now, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to let us know in the comment section below and we'll do our really best to be able to answer that. Please also make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.